Hello. So, today and for the next post, you will be reading and writing about Jonathan Swift, the British satirist. And you'll be looking at extracts from his long and most famous work called Gulliver's Travels and from his shorter piece called A Modest Proposal. So, Swift is the probably the most famous satirist of all time. And if ever you look up the the, the definition of satire, or you look up an example of satire, you will almost inevitably be pointed towards the work of Swift. So the question is, what is satire? Satire is a very difficult genre to um, define clearly, and in fact it's best understood by reading it and engaging with it, which is what you're going to be doing. Now, satire essentially is a way of poking fun at people, making fun of establishment figures, of people in positions of power, usually, and exposing their follies, exposing their foolish ways of behaving or thinking, but doing it in such a way that the audience responds positively to it because it's funny and absurd and ridiculous. So we see here the examples of, um, as I mentioned, Gulliver's Travels and then A Modest Proposal. So A Modest Proposal, which is the shorter piece, is often used as the most succinct and precise example of written satire. So what's, what this is, is the writer is making the suggestion, a modest proposal, as he puts it, that Irish people eat their babies. All right. He says, look, they don't have enough money to feed them. They can't take care of them. So why not eat them, right? Yeah. Modest proposal. So why would Swift write a piece in which he suggested that Irish people eat their babies? Does he really think that Irish people should eat their babies? Of course, he does not think that. What he is doing is he is presenting a way of thinking so absurd and so extreme and so outrageous that almost nobody could actually take this seriously and, and not be disgusted. And yet he's writing it in this very deadpan, serious way, as if it were a real proposal being made by some kind of upper class English lord or, you know, wealth well to do wealthy person in the government. Um, and the, the point behind this is, is he's saying, look, this is the kind of attitude that these people in power hold towards the Irish, right? So this was uh, written in the uh, 18th century, and the British controlled Ireland, basically, and the Irish were a kind of oppressed population, and so the British were, in Swift's estimation, a fairly... Uh, cruel occupier and so by making this point by writing this absurdist piece he's illustrating this uh, problem as he sees it right um, but it's very effective right it's 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 far more effective one might think than if he was just to go on an angry tirade attacking the British for how cruel they are to not care about the Irish instead he writes this outrageous but very funny piece and that is the power of satire uh, satire you find again in the in the extracts from Gulliver's Travels Gulliver's Travels is a kind of travel log um, and it's making fun in a sense of a genre that was very popular at that time so this was still in the age of um, exploration as it's sometimes called where British folk were going and sailing around the world and discovering all sorts of places well discovering there were people living there but they were you know discovering it from their perspective and then they would write about it and try and inform the British public about all the wild and wonderful things that they had seen on their travels so Gulliver's Travels as well makes fun of that idea so Swift writes about the most you know outrageous things that he has encountered including what you'll read here a country run by large horses and um, but he goes in and he pokes fun at all sorts of other things as well. He pokes fun at the politics of the day. He pokes fun at um, the manners of people. 
he you will notice a group of individuals that he meets called yahoos and that word is still used in the english language today just to, to describe people in a very unfavorable fashion you may say those people are a bunch of yahoos um, and the yahoos here are controlled by the horses in this land that swift visits um, so you can see what the yahoos are and what you think what point Swift is trying to make by his representation of, of, of the horses and the yahoos. Um, so when you're reading these works, just remember the concept of satire. This is the finest example, well, one of the finest early examples of satire. Uh, so that's something to think about strongly when you're writing your responses. Uh, but again, take it in whatever direction you want. Uh, bring your own thoughts to it. I look forward to reading your responses.